how Native populations view the world, but we also looked at the Judeo-Christian creation story so we could get a sense of how Europeans were viewing the world when they arrived um, in the Americas. Then we moved into looking at things like uh, Christopher Columbus's journal to see what he was thinking and saying about Native populations. And we looked at various accounts from various other explorers and accounts of the Aztec um, encounter with Cortez. And then we moved into our projects, which you see here in the other room. Every student had to pick a tribe of their choice. And as you see, some are the same because I wanted them to do the tribe they wanted to do. And in addition to researching the information, they had to make a model of a traditional dwelling, and they had to try to use materials that would have been used in the actual system. I only brought some because there are 50 of them, and I only have so much room in a Honda Civic. <laughs> so, and these ladies have volunteered. Uh, Anna Dijak was originally going to help us, but she has driver's ed tonight, so she couldn't, she couldn't make it. Um, this is Cassidy, and this is Shivani. Um, and they've been working really hard for the last few weeks to teach us about the origins of Columbus Day and the origins of Indigenous Peoples Day and a few of their thoughts around how we should approach these topics. So without further ado, I will let you do your thing. Indigenous peoples have a great respect for their land. In general, Creation stories show a culture's perspective on how people relate to nature. Native Americans see themselves as part of nature and believe that they are one. While Europeans see themselves as controllers of nature, the world perspective influences how they interact with each other. For instance, in the Salomon Indian creation story, humans are in charge of growing their population and originated from the, ba from the bald eagle because he thought the world was incomplete. The important aspect of it is that humans were made last because the bald eagle thought the world was unfinished. And similarly, in the Cherokee in creation story, humans only are in charge of giving birth every year. In the Christian creation story, God made humans in his likeness. The big difference between creation stories from the indigenous groups is that Native Americans don't see humans as number one. But during this time, Europeans saw themselves as dominant and most important. The attitude in the stories carries over a Christian's treatment toward the Native Americans. Columbus voyaged looking for wealth and fame. His goal was to find an easier route to the Spice Islands, which at the time were rich with goods, but had difficult access. He knew that the world was round, and he thought that making the trip west instead of east would gain him an easy route towards prosperity. When Columbus landed, he thought that he was in the east, which is why he called the indigenous Americans, Americans Indians. People credit Columbus with the discovery of Americas, but there was already an estimated of 60 million indigenous peoples living here before Columbus's arrival. And these people were not uncivilized savages, as many myths entail. There were major civilizations with their own government systems, cultures, and wealth. Even in North America, Chiyoki, a city near modern-day St. Louis, had a population of 10,000 to 20,000 people. Columbus and other explorers viewed the natives as wealth and property. He could use them to his advantage, so in other words, he objectified them. Similar to the Christianity creation story, Columbus believed that he had the right to control the native people, as God created humans to be the dominant species. He thought that natives would make good servants because they seemed to grasp information quickly and were intelligent. This viewpoint shows the overall theme of trying to get wealth and capitalize off of aspects of their culture. Europeans took advantage of the natives as a way to gain wealth for themselves. For example, the Aztecs viewed Cortez as the sun god because their religion stated that someone from a far off land will come and save them. During a large celebration for Cortez, the Spaniards attacked Montemiza and Tenochtitlan, with Montemiza pleading them, O oh Lord, they are completely unarmed. This attack was unprovoked, and the Europeans only received friendly treatment from the Aztecs. Columbus's arrival in the Bahamas on October 12, 1492. 
His name was not widely known until the middle of the 18th century. He became known in the general population when the U.S. started using his name for popular landmarks, such as the District of Columbus. People don't even know what he looks like. All the photos we see today are actually paintings of what artists think he looks like. Around the same time that Columbus's name started being used, many Italians were arriving in America. This was in the 1820s. During this time, Italians were extremely dis discriminated against, ethnically and religiously. This discrimination led to violence, including one of the largest mass, mass lynchings in New Orleans in 19 1891. In this lynching, 11 Sicilian immigrants were killed for suspicion of killing the city's police commissioner even though they were found innocent prior. A year after the lynchings, when the first commemoration of Columbus Day had occurred in 1892, when President Benjamin Harrison called the first national observance of Columbus Day. President Harrison meant, to be, meant for it to be a one-time national celebration. However, it became a federal holiday. Italian Americans saw an Italian being celebrated, so they used this opportunity as a way to self assimilate. They are the reason Columbus is widely celebrated. They not only see Columbus Day as a celebration for an explorer, they see it as a celebration for their heritage. Colorado became the first state to officially recognize Columbus Day in 1906. The bill was pushed upon state senator Cosmero Bertello by Italian Americans. The main source of information about Columbus's biography was from Washington Irving's <coughs> A History of Life, Voyages of Christopher Columbus. This fictionalized biography can be viewed as the cause of many myths surrounding Columbus today. Around, around the same time, other movements were taking place to celebrate different explorers, such as Leif Erikson a Viking who is believed to have, reached the, to, have, to have reached North America around 1000, which is before Columbus. Wisconsin was the first state to celebrate Leif Erikson Day in 1930. In 1934, Franklin Roosevelt, from the guidance of the Knights of Columbus, made Columbus Day a federal holiday. Congress declared it to be the second Monday of October in 1970. After the 1970s, a vast amount of people have been wondering if Columbus Day should really be celebrated. Three states, Hawaii, Alaska, and South Dakota, have never observed Columbus Day. South Dakota decided to recognize Native American Day in 1990. Hawaii decided to celebrate Discoverer's Day and recognize a Polynesian group on the same day as Columbus Day. The second Monday in October, and Alaska celebrates Alaska Day. Today, many states are helping and regarding indigenous people by celebrating their history. Seattle, for example, has publicly, publicly recognized and acknowledged that it was built upon the land of indigenous peoples. They pledge to teach accurate information to the general public and commemorate the indigenous history. The change in this holiday's ideology is a step <coughs> further to integrate appreciating the core of the United States of America's history. Self-determination for indigenous communities is the right to freely practice their laws, own land, and economically develop. This means that the indigenous people are able to control themselves separate from the federal government. Before Europeans arrived in the Americas, there were already many cities, villages, governments, and many aspects of society with advanced technology, political systems, and even a written language. Today, harmonization needs to occur between indigenous communities and the federal government, where thoughtful connections can be made. Reconciliation is hard, but needs to occur in, occur in order for unity. Accusations of genocide threaten this unity, as the country will not be able to move past as a whole. The stand of enmity needs to be abolished, modernly or historically. Discussions between indigenous peoples and the current federal government will allow for both sides to be understood. Equal rights and opportunities for Native Americans is a requirement for a society. In order to progress, there are many important steps that we need to take for indigenous people. Myths about explorers need to be stopped, being talked about. 
Children at a young age should be introduced to the truth about Native history and their position in America. We need to learn about Native American history. There needs to be a realization of why circumstances need to change and how this affects Indigenous people's everyday lives. Bringing up Indigenous peoples doesn't mean turning them down or the achievements that Columbus has had. He paved the way from the old world and the new world, but he did this at the cost of Native Americans' lives and homes. So discussions between everyone, meaning the entire country and Indigenous people, needs to take place in order so we can achieve unity. 